Hey everybody, David East here from the Firebase team at Google. And on today's episode of Firecast, I'm gonna show you how Firebase UI can be your best friend. When you're binding to lists in your Android apps, Firebase UI makes this so much easier. So I'm gonna first show you how we can use Firebase UI for list views, and then we're gonna dive into recycle reviews. So let's get started. So when you're binding your data to a list view, there is really only three things you need to do. First is you have to create the backing data. And the second is you have to create an adapter. And third, you need to supply the view. And in this case, since I'm using an array adapter, I kind of get that part for free because it assumes you're using a text view. And of course, you have to set the list view. And you know, this is great if you like boring static data, but if you want real-time data, things can get a little more complicated. To bind a list view using Firebase, you first need to create a Firebase reference to a list of data. So right here, I'm pointing out to slash items, which is a list of items. Then you create a child event listener to listen to granular child events. Oh, and if you want more details about events, then check out my previous video, which covers them in detail. With child events, you can listen for when children are added and you can push them onto the underlying data and notify the adapter. But it becomes complicated to sync an array when items start changing. When items change, you have to find out where the item is in the array, update it, and then notify the adapter. So while real-time events are pretty flexible and give you a lot of control, it would be great if we could work with a class more like an array adapter. And that, my friends, is exactly what Firebase UI is for. So with Firebase UI, you can create a reference to your list of data, so before the items location. Then you can use that reference to create a Firebase list adapter. And you can see that Firebase list adapter is generic, so it works with whatever your data model is. And Firebase list adapter just needs to take in the layout, and in this case we're using one provided by Android, and then lastly, the reference. And the really awesome thing about just passing the references is that it handles all of the child events and keeps an underlying array in sync for you. So to bind your Firebase data to the view, you override the populate view method. And this view returns to you the view, the data model, and the position in the backing array. And you can find any components in the view and then populate them using the data model. And this right here is super awesome because you don't have to listen to all these child events and then manage this array, which is constantly in sync, just moving around. All you have to do is specify the view and the reference and you're in business. And the list adapter is set really just like any other adapter. So you might be thinking like, hey, this is cool, but does it really only work with list views? I mean, we should be using recycler views, right? And yes, random internet watcher, you are right. So that's why Firebase UI works with both list views as well as recycler views. So let's see this in action by installing Firebase UI and implementing it in an existing app. So installing Firebase UI is mad simple. All I have to do is open up the build.gradle file and then include the dependency in the dependency section right here. So I have the Firebase client installed and then below it is just Firebase UI. So this app is called Listy and Listy really doesn't do too much. Uh, right now, all Listy can do is add data to an in-memory array. Boring. So let's spice this app up by refactoring this array adapter to a Firebase list adapter. So to learn a little bit more about the internals of Listy, Listy has a fab that opens up a dialog fragment. And when the user adds an item, the onItemAdded method is called with a newly added item, which in this case is being added to the underlying array and the list adapter is being notified of dataset changes. So I'm going to delete the array adapter setup and create a Firebase list adapter. So I'm going to give it a type of string because that is the data model. And then I'm going to do new Firebase list adapter. 
And inside the constructor, we need the context and I need the string class and then the layout, which I'm just gonna use one of the simple list items given by the Android OS. And then lastly, I'm passing in the reference. And in case you're wondering, the reference is just a simple list of items. So with the Firebase list adapter created, I can now populate the view returned by the Firebase list adapter. So the simple list item one layout has a single text view, which has an ID of text one. So using the view, I can find view by ID and then just pass in the ID for text view one. And now I can set the text view with the data passed back by populate view. And lastly, I will set the adapter to the list view. So now let's demo this app. I'm going to tap the fab, add an item, and then womp womp, there is an error. So let's see what's going on. Ah, yes, array adapter dot notify data set changed on a null object reference. Well, that is probably because we are no longer using the array adapter or even the array list. But in on item added, I'm still calling it. So yes, that's just gonna go kaboom. So since Firebase list adapter handles the backing data, I'm just gonna delete both the array list and the array adapter. So since I'm not using an array list, how do I add data to the Firebase list adapters backing data? Well, that's pretty easy. You can just use the Firebase reference. So I'm gonna call push on this reference, which creates a child reference with a unique ID generated by the Firebase SDK. So if the mref points to the slash items location, calling push creates a child reference underneath that gives it this crazy little string that is unique. Then I'm going to call set value and pass in the newly added item. So with that fix, the demo should now work like a charm. And boom, just like that, calling this line right here allows us to keep our list view synchronized in real time. So list views with Firebase UI are pretty easy to implement, but they're kind of basic and they don't offer the same performance benefits as a recycler view. So let's see how we can build a recycler view using Firebase UI. So list views are easy to set up and they're great for prototyping or situations where you've been using them for so long that you don't even wanna think about refactoring. It's okay, I get it. But you should use a recycler view because they're built for handling large lists of data. And with the Firebase database, you could be rendering items like crazy because you know it's a real time data stream. So I'm gonna refactor this list view to a recycler view. So I'm gonna open up the layout of the main activity and I'm gonna change the list view to use a recycler view. And then obviously change the ID because it would be super mean to keep that as list view. And then back in the activity, I need to change all of the references to list view and switch them to recycler view with the appropriate naming. So initialize the recycler view and find view by ID with the new ID. Then I will set the fixed size to true, which works for performance benefits. And then I'm gonna set up the layout manager to use a linear layout manager because the layout is vertical. So I don't need this Firebase list adapter anymore, so I'm going to delete it. If you've worked with recycler views before, you know that they need a view holder for caching potentially expensive FindVive UID results. So down here, I'm just gonna paste in this view holder class. So the message view holder extends recycler view dot view holder, and it comes with a text view as a property. And then just inside the constructor using the view passback, I just find the view by the android.r.id text one and initialize the text view. If a list view uses a Firebase list adapter, it would make sense that a recycler view uses a Firebase recycler view adapter. And this adapter has two generic parameters. The first is the data model and the second is the view holder. 
the constructor takes in the data model, which is string.class, and a layout. But let's switch it up this time and use the two-line list item. And we also need the view holder and, of course, the Firebase reference. Now inside of populate view holder, I will set the text to the view holder, which is returned by the recycler view adapter. And lastly, make sure to set the adapter on the recycler view. And seriously, I forget to do this all the time. So now we'll go and demo it, tap add item with a new item. And boom, we get a new item inside our recycler view. So this is just like three items. So for fun, I added a bunch of items. So now you can see that scrolling back and forth is smooth and easy. So whether you're building a list view or a recycler view, make sure that you use Firebase UI because it's gonna save you a lot of time. So that's all for this episode of Firecast. Make sure you tune in next time where we're gonna actually switch to the web and build something with Angular. So thanks for watching.